Christopher John Bjorkness predicted the catastrophic events taking place in the world today. Back in 2006, in his 2,900-page book, The Manufacture and Sale of St. Einstein, his revelations regarding the planned fate of Lebanon and the Palestinians contain valuable insights into what is presently happening and are but a small fraction of his prophetic and fully accurate predictions found in this massive book which was published decades ago and which you can find at cjbbooks.com. Bjorkness wrote on pages 120 and 121. Zionist Jews placed George Bush into power in America. Jews had their agent George Bush bring America into perpetual war and perpetual debt. These same Jews now blame Bush and Gentile government in the United States for the harm Jews are deliberately causing Americans and the non-Jewish peoples of the Middle East. Jews even blame the United States for Israel's unprovoked aggression and genocide against Lebanon. In this way, Jews not only unburden themselves from their guilt, they discredit Gentile governments and bring Gentile governments into unnecessary war with each other, all of which furthers the ambitions of ancient Jewish messianic goals. Jews are presently also scapegoating Hezbollah and the Palestinian people for the barbaric Jewish genocide of the Palestinian and Lebanese peoples. Israelis followed the same model to create a pretext for the Jewish mass murder of helpless Arabs. Israelis sent Jewish soldiers into foreign territory and then pretended that the capture of these soldiers constituted a casus belli for the genocidal wars Jews have been planning for 2,500, as found in the book of Ezekiel. Jews overrate the strength of Hezbollah so as to provide a pretext for the complete destruction of Lebanon Jews planned in Ezekiel, chapters 27 and 28. Jews offer false hope that their unprovoked aggression will soon end, then dash those hopes by intensifying their murder of helpless Lebanese children and babies and pour the blood of their victims back onto their victims by scapegoating them for Jewish atrocities. Scapegoating is but one form of deceit which is deeply ingrained in the Judaic psyche. Another ancient Jewish deceit is the use of crypto-Jews to undermine Gentile societies and religions. Christian Zionists, often led by crypto-Jews, are desperate to commit genocide against at least two billion human beings in the false and utterly selfish hopes that by mass murdering these innocents, Christian Zionist mass murderers will provoke Jesus to rapture the Christian Zionists, mass murderers into heaven. Crypto Jews created these false beliefs and others like them and sponsor them today in an effort to trick Gentiles into killing one another off. Ancient Jews taught this behavior in the Hebrew Bible in the book of Esther. Jews celebrate the genocide of Gentiles and the deceit of the crypto Jew once every year in the Jewish festival of Purim. It is the Jews' favorite holiday. Crypto-Jews, Zionist Jews, and Israel Firsters have infiltrated the mass media and governments of all the world. They are deliberately attempting to orchestrate a nuclear World War III in the hopes that it will kill off the Gentiles and leave only righteous Jews alive in the end times. The people of the world must take action to save themselves from the genocide, Racist Jews have been planning for 2,500 years, and which they believe they must carry out now that they have created the Jewish kingdom in Palestine. We cannot depend upon government or media to help. Both have been corrupted by genocidal Jewish influence. This is part of a broader plan to fulfill Judaic prophecy by political action meant to discredit Gentile governments and religions and promote the myth that Judaism and Jews are innocent and highly moral. We see it today in the widespread attacks on Islam and Muslim nations, which are fomented by racist and highly unethical Jews. Just as Zionist Jews subverted German society with crypto-Jewish leaders who rose to power on a platform of anti-Semitism, Zionist Jews are subverting Muslim nations with crypto-Jewish leaders and Jewish agents who rise to power on an anti-Zionist platform. Jews covertly commit acts of terrorism against other Jews, which they blame on non-Jews in order to create a climate of antagonism and distrust, where Jewish racists can spuriously claim the moral high ground and utter their hateful and false defamations against other peoples with impunity and apparent justification. From pages 179 to 180, according to the Masoretic text, which is the version of the Old Testament that most accurately reflects of the views of Jews, Deuteronomy 6:10 to 11 and 11, 
24 to 25. See also Joshua 1, 2 to 5, 24, 13. State, And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou didst not build, 611, and houses full of all good things, which thou didst not fill, and cisterns hewn out, which thou that didst not hew, vineyards and olive trees, which thou didst not plant, and thou shalt eat and be satisfied. Every place whereon the sole of your foot shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the hinder sea shall be your border. There shall no man be able to stand against you. The Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath spoken unto you. Version of the Jewish Publication Society. Isaiah 40, 15 through 17. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, the isles are as a moat in weight and Lebanon is not sufficient fuel nor the beasts thereof sufficient for burnt offerings. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as things of naught and vanity. At pages 251 to 252, in the 1937, David Ben-Gurion stated that the Zionist Jews want to take not just Palestine, but all of southern Syria and southern Lebanon, as well as Jordan and the Sinai, from their rightful inhabitants. They want the land of the covenant from the Nile to the Euphrates. Ben-Gurion stated in 1936, The acceptance of partition does not commit us to renounce Transjordan. One does not demand from anybody to give up his vision. We shall accept a state in the boundaries fixed today, but the boundaries of Zionist aspirations are the concern of the Jewish people, and no external factor will be able to limit them. Ben-Gurion stated to the general staff, I propose that as soon as we receive the equipment on the ship, we should prepare to go over to the offensive with the aim of smashing Lebanon, Transjordan, and Syria. The weak point in the Arab coalition is Lebanon for the Muslim regime is artificial and easy to undermine. A Christian state should be established with its southern border on the Litany River. We will make an alliance with it. When we smash the Arab Legion's strength and bomb Amman, we will eliminate Transjordan too, and then Syria will fall. If Egypt still dares to fight on, we shall bomb Port Said, Alexandria, and Cairo. And in this fashion, we will end the war and settle our forefathers' accounts with Egypt, Assyria, and Aram. In her book, Israel's Sacred Terrorism, Livia Rokash reproduced an excerpt from a 26th of May, 1955 entry in Moshe Sharat's personal diary, which recounts his impressions of Moshe Dayan's plans to provoke the Arabs to respond by first attacking them, then stealing their land when they sought to defend themselves. The conclusions from Dayan's words are clear. This state has no international obligations, no economic problems. The question of peace is non-existent. It must calculate its steps narrow-mindedly and live on its sword. It must see the sword as the main, if not the only instrument with which to keep its morale high and to retain its moral tension. Toward this end, it may, no, it must invent dangers. And to do this, it must adopt the method of provocation and revenge. And above all, let us hope for a new war with the Arab countries, so that we may finally get rid of our troubles and acquire our space. Such a slip of the tongue. Ben-Gurion himself said that it would be worthwhile to pay an Arab a million pounds to start a war. 26 May 1955, 1021. Menachem Begin stated in 1948, The partition of the homeland is illegal. It will never be recognized. The signature of institutions and individuals of the partition agreement is invalid. It will not bind the Jewish people. Jerusalem was and will forever buy our capital. Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, will be restored to the people of Israel. All of it and forever. As Ben-Gurion and many other leading Jewish figures have declared, Jews set about to fulfill the messianic prophecies themselves without God's intervention and without any concern for the rights or the lives of others. The Zionists were not reacting to the Holocaust when they took away the Palestinians' homes by force. Rather, they created the Holocaust as a means to achieve Jewish prophecy and force the Jews out of Europe. Then the Zionists continued their Nazi practices in Palestine. The Zionists were not justified in taking the Palestinians' land because of the Holocaust. 
Rather, they were themselves responsible for the rise of the Nazis, and in no event did anything the Nazis did give the Jews the right to maim, murder, terrorize, or displace the Palestinians. It is important to note that Nazism was but one phase of the Zionist plan to terrorize humanity, and that the Zionist terror tactics were widely used during the formation of the Jewish state and have continued throughout Israel's existence. The Zionists will eventually cause a third world war to bring on the apocalypse that they believe will hasten the messianic era and the miraculous creation of a new earth with only righteous Jews to populate it. Isaiah 11, 4, 42, 1, 65, 66. Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 15 to 16. Racist, Kabbalistic Jews believe that they are duty-bound to destroy the living environment of the earth and ruin the genetics of the human species so as to provoke God to obliterate this earth and create new heavens and a new earth, the so-called New World Order or Jewish Utopia. These racist, Kabbalistic Jews are taught that they will have new and improved bodies in this new world and need not worry about the genetic damage they are intentionally causing to human beings across the earth. They believe that only Jews will be left alive and that they will not only be restored, but improved upon. The books of Isaiah chapters 65 and 66 and Ezekiel chapters 36 through 38 are the primary sources of these concepts, which were more fully developed in subsequent Jewish literature, including the apocalyptic apocryphal Jewish books of Enoch and others. Note that the elect, the chosen, are exclusively the Jews. Page 373. In 1915, that meant killing off the Armenians, and Zionist Jews set about that task with a Kabbalistic Jewish fervor that took 1,500,000 innocent Christian lives. Today, the racist and genocidal Jews of Israel view the Palestinians, Lebanese, and Muslims in general as the Amalekites. Religious Jews believe that there may be a decision as to whether to first exterminate the Muslims or first destroy the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, they are aggressively pursuing both religious duties and have decided to let fate decide the order. We bear witness to the brutal racist Jewish attempt to genocide these innocent peoples in Israel's latest unprovoked attack on Lebanon. This is all according to an ancient Jewish plan, as revealed in, among many other texts, the Jewish Talmud in the Book of Sanhedrin, Folio 20b, page 483. An important aspect of the Abraham myth which weeds off certain races. The Old Testament is filled with mythologies whereby individuals symbolize entire peoples, is the declaration that God would shield Abraham, Genesis 15, 1. Jews promoted the myth that God would annihilate anyone who challenged Israel, Isaiah 41, 11, Jeremiah 30, 16, 57. Jews celebrated the genocide of the Egyptian army in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, through chapter 15, verse 1. Deuteronomy 11, 24 to 28 states, Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day, to go after other gods which ye have not known. As a threat against the nations, Jews sought to promote the myth of their invincibility and tried desperately to preserve the Gentiles' fear of the inaccessibility of Israel. Frederick the Great is reputed to have stated, to oppress the Jews never brought prosperity to any government. In 1906, Herbert N. Kassin tried to intimidate Americans into welcoming the massive influx of Eastern European Jews. It seems as if the American plan of giving the Jews fair play was succeeding. At any rate, all the other plans failed. No nations prospers that persecutes the Jew, said Frederick the Great. Egypt tried persecution, and the Jews went to its funeral. Assyria made the same blunder. So did Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, Spain. Say the Jew is not a fighter. This prompts the question if America will share the sorry fate of those nations 
which had a significantly large number of racist Jews in its midst. Jeremiah 24, 9 states, And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places whither I shall drive them. Malachi 1, 14 states, I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. So we see that it is a myth that nations which bless the Jews are blessed. All are cursed by the express words of the Old Testament. At pages 525 to 526, Bjorkness wrote, In an article, Begin and the Beasts, New Statesman, Volume 103, Number 2674, 25th June, 1982, page 12, Amnon Kapeliuk wrote of Menachem Begin, the Prime Minister of Israel, The war in Lebanon cannot be interpreted, even by its most devoted proponents in Israel, as a war of survival. For this reason, the government has gone to extraordinary lengths to dehumanize the Palestinians. Begin described them in a speech in the Knesset as beasts walking on two legs. Palestinians have often been called bugs, while their refugee camps in Lebanon are referred to as tourist camps. In order to rationalize the bombing of civilian populations, Begin emotively declared, if Hitler was sitting in a house with 20 other people, would it be correct to blow up the house? Page 665. Gore Vidal wrote, Currently, there is little open debate in the United States on any of these matters. The Soviet Union must be permanently demonized in order to keep the money flowing to the Pentagon for defense, while Arabs are characterized as subhuman terrorists. Israel may not be criticized at all. Ironically, the press in Israel is far more open and self-critical than ours. We do have one token Palestinian who is allowed an occasional word in the press, Professor Edward Said, who wrote, Guardian, December 21, 1986, since the 1982 Israeli invasion of Lebanon. It was felt by the Zionist lobby that the spectacle of ruthless Israeli power on the TV screen would have to be effaced from memory by the strategy of incriminating the media as anti-Semitic for showing these scenes at all. A wide range of Americans were then exuberantly defamed, including myself. From pages 881 to page 887, Jewish Terrorism, in its article Israel, the Great Soviet Encyclopedia, a translation of the third edition, volume 10, Macmillan, New York, 1976, pages 477 through 484 at 478, wrote, Thus, despite the UN resolution of November 29, 1947, Israel expanded its territory to include four-fifths of the area of mandated Palestine. Both before the formation of Israel and the outbreak of the war, and during the course of the war itself, Zionist terror led to the mass destruction of Arabs and the expulsion of nearly a million Arabs from the territory of Israel and from the Arab portion of Palestine that it had seized. The problem of Palestinian refugees emerged, a problem that, because of Israel's unaltering refusal to implement the UN resolution of December 11, 1948, on the right of refugees to return to their homeland, or if they choose to receive material compensation, became one of the most important issues complicating the Middle East crisis. The Great Soviet Encyclopedia, published in the 1970s at the time when the United Nations General Assembly Resolution No. 3379 declared that Zionism is a form of racism, detailed many of the Zionist abuses and violations of international law. Refer also to its articles, Anti-Semitism, Jews, Judaism, Middle East Crisis, Palestine, Pauli Zion, and Zionism. See also N. S. Alenteva, editor, Celi i metodi fonstvo jus cego sionizma, izdvo polit. Litri, Moskva, 1977. N. S. Alenteva, redaktor, Celi i metodi fonstvo jus cego sionizma, izdatelstvo politiske literature, Moskva, CJB, the political Zionists of the early 20th century had a well-deserved international reputation as murderers, torturers, and terrorists. The Jews of the 19th century had a reputation as revolutionary terrorists and assassins. Jewish terrorism continued through the Zionist sternness of the 1940s, who offered Hitler a military alliance between Zionists and Nazis based on the principle that Jews must be removed from Europe 
and Menachem begins terrorist Zionist Jews in the Ergen, through to the Jewish Zionist Mir Kahane, and beyond to the present time. While the Sternus, led by Yitzhak Shamir, and the Haganah, led by David Ben-Gurion, were busy terrorizing British vessels and encampments, the Irgun, led by Menachem Begin, murdered 91 people at the King David Hotel and planned to murder the British Foreign Secretary, Ernest Bevan. The Jews dressed up as Arabs when they bombed the King David Hotel in order to generate hatred towards innocent Arabs. Not only did they murder innocent people, they blamed other innocent people for their crimes. They also planned to make the Jewish assassination of the British Foreign Secretary Ernest appear as if it had been committed by the Irish Republican Army in order to hide the fact that Zionists were the true murderers. On the 9th of April, 1948, sternest and Irgun terrorists committed the Der Yassin massacre against defenseless Palestinians. They murdered hundreds of helpless men, women, and children. The Jewish terrorists then stole the land of the dead Palestinians and chased off those who survived their attack, stealing their land and property as well. The Israelis have repeated the Jewish atrocities across Palestine, following the course laid out for them in Exodus 34, 11-17. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a-whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a-whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Jews in Lithuania and Poland had acted in the same fashion during the Second World War, perhaps taking their cue from Old Testament orders from the Jewish God to utterly destroy other people's villages, leaving nothing left alive and no property intact, as but one example of many, see 1 Samuel 15. Jews mass murdered the men, women, children, and infants of Konyuchi, Kanyukai. Many Jews welcomed the Bolsheviks into Poland and Lithuania and helped them to mass murder helpless Poles and Lithuanians. Jews were notorious for denouncing their Gentile neighbors to communist authorities, who were often themselves Jewish. 1 Samuel 15, 3 states, Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. The ultimate goal of Judaism is to enslave and exterminate all non-Jews, Isaiah 65, 66. In 1948, the Zionist Sternus, under the leadership of Yitzhak Shamir, murdered Count Foka Bernadotte, whom the United Nations Security Council had appointed to mediate Palestinian-Israeli negotiations. Count Bernadotte had rescued tens of thousands of Jews from the Nazis. These Jewish terrorists also hanged innocent Brits and wired their dead bodies with explosive booby traps. They also sent letter bombs to British authorities and the sternest murdered Lord Moyne, British Minister of State, and his driver in cold blood in a terrorist act. Jewish Zionist terrorists, posing as native Gentiles, terrorized Jewish populations in Egypt, Iraq, Hungary, and Romania in order to disparage those peoples and in order to force Jews to Palestine. Mossad agents infiltrated the Iraqi government and instituted laws against Jews, and Jewish agents committed murderous terrorist acts against Jews in Iraq in order to force the remaining Jews to emigrate to Palestine, just as Zionist Jews had put the Nazi regime into place and terrorized and murdered Jews in order to force Jews into Palestine. The Israeli government has committed acts of war against the United States by bombing American interests in Egypt in 1954 with Israel's Operation Susanna in the Lavon Affair and by attempting to sink the USS Liberty in 1967. In both instances, the Israeli government tried to lay blame on Egypt for the Israeli attacks on the United States in an attempt to incite the United States to fight Israel's enemies. In the 1970s, the Israelis attempted to assassinate United States Ambassador to Lebanon, John Gunther Dean, as well as his entire family. 
In her book, Israel's Sacred Terrorism, Livia Rokash reproduced an excerpt from a 26th of May, 1955 entry in Moshe Sherat's personal diary, which recounts his impressions of Moshe Dayan's plans to provoke the Arabs to respond by first attacking them, then stealing their land when they sought to defend themselves. The conclusions from Dayan's words are clear. This state has no international obligations, no economic problems. The question of peace is non-existent. It must calculate its steps narrow-mindedly and live on its sword. It must see the sword as the main, if not the only instrument, with which to keep its morale high and to retain its moral tension. Toward this end it may, no, it must, invent dangers. And to do this it must adopt the method of provocation and revenge. And above all, let us hope for a new war with the Arab countries, so that we may finally get rid of our troubles and acquire our space. Such a slip of the tongue. Ben-Gurion himself said that it would be worthwhile to pay an Arab a million pounds to start a war. 26 May, 1955, 1021. Some Jews have long sought to destroy the Dome of the Rock in the Al-Aqsa Mosque and have recently persuaded dispensationalist Christians to join them in the quest to destroy both so that the Jews can build a Jewish temple on the site. Under Jewish occupation, on 21st August 1969, arsonists inflicted heavy damage to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The United Nations Security Council condemned Israel for the attack in Resolution 271. In 2000, Ariel Sharon intentionally provoked Muslims by invading the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and Israeli police attacked Palestinians in the mosque. Many Jews and Christian dispensationalists have encouraged terrorist attacks against the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. In 1968, Israel attacked a civilian airport in Beirut and destroyed numerous civilian aircraft. On 31st December 1968, United Nations Security Council Resolution 262 officially condemned the unprovoked Israeli attack on Lebanon. Numerous other United Nations resolutions condemned Israel's repeated unprovoked and unjustifiable attacks on Lebanon, including resolutions 270, 279, 280, 285, 313, 316, 317, 332, 337, 347, 425, 427, 450, 467, 498, 501, 508, 509, 512, 513, 515, 516, 517, 518, 520, 521, and 587. In 1982, under Ariel Sharon's leadership, thousands of civilians were mass murdered in Lebanon in the Sabra and Shatila massacre. In 1996, under Shimon Peres' leadership, Israel bombed civilians in Lebanon in Operation Grapes of Wrath. Many have accused Israel of fomenting the civil war between Christians and Muslims in Lebanon, which largely destroyed the most beautiful nation and city, Lebanon and Beirut, in the region. Israel also attacked helpless civilians in Jordan, perhaps most aggressively in 1968, and faced the condemnation of United Nations Security Council resolutions 228, 248, 256 and 265. David Ben-Gurion once stated, I propose that, as soon as we receive the equipment on the ship, we should prepare to go over to the offensive with the aim of smashing Lebanon, Transjordan, and Syria. The weak point in the Arab coalition is Lebanon for the Muslim regime is artificial and easy to undermine. A Christian state should be established with its southern border on the Litani River. We will make an alliance with it. When we smash the Arab Legion's strength and bomb Amman, we will eliminate Transjordan too, and then Syria will fall. If Egypt still dares to fight on, we shall bomb Port Said, Alexandria, and Cairo. And in this fashion, we will end the war and settle our forefathers' accounts with Egypt, Assyria, and Aram. Lieutenant General Raphael Eitan, outgoing Chief of Staff of the Israeli Army, stated on 12 April 1983, when we have settled the land, all the Arabs will be able to do about it will be to scurry around like drug roaches in a bottle. In an article entitled, An Israeli Mayor is Under Scrutiny, the New York Times reported on June 6, 1989, on page 5, Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg had offered biblical justification for the view that the spilling of non-Jewish blood 
was a lesser offense than the spilling of Jewish blood. Any trial based on the assumption that Jews and Goyim are equal is a total travesty of justice, he said. Rabbi Yaakov Perrin was quoted by Clyde Haberman in an article entitled, Arafat Dismisses Rabbins Moves as Hollow, The New York Times, 28th February, 1994. Page 1. Rabbi Perrin stated, One million Arabs are not worth a Jewish fingernail. In an article, Begin in the Beast, New Statesman, Volume 103, Number 2674, 25th June, 1982, Page 12, Amnon Kapiliuk wrote of Menachem Begin, the Prime Minister of Israel, The war in Lebanon cannot be interpreted, even by its most devoted proponents in Israel, as a war of survival. For this reason, the government has gone to extraordinary lengths to dehumanize the Palestinians. Begin described them in a speech in the Knesset as beasts walking on two legs. Palestinians have often been called bugs, while their refugee camps in Lebanon are referred to as tourist camps. In order to rationalize the bombing of civilian populations, Begin emotively declared, if Hitler was sitting in a house with 20 other people, would it be correct to blow up the house? In 1982, Israelis massacred Palestinians in Beirut. The United Nations Security Council condemned Israel for the criminal massacre in Resolution 592. In 1986, Israeli soldiers opened fire on Palestinian students at Birsight University. The United Nations Security Council condemned the attack in Resolution 592. In 1987, the Israeli government instituted a policy under Yitzhak Rabin of smashing the bones of Palestinian demonstrators with rocks. Israeli soldiers held helpless children and pounded heavy, jagged stones against their bodies until their limbs were crippled with compound fractures. On 25th February, 1994, Benjamin C. Goldstein, a.k.a. Baruch Kapel Goldstein, murdered several people and injured many more in his terrorist attack against innocent Muslims who were peacefully praying in the Al Ibrahimi Mosque during the holy month of Ramadan. Goldstein was a follower of Mir Kahan and a medical doctor who refused to treat Gentiles because Maimonides forbade a Jewish physician from treating a Gentile unless under duress and even then declared that a fee must be charged to the Gentile. Maimonides, Mishneh Torah, Idolatry 10, 1-2. More than 50 Palestinians were murdered and hundreds more were injured in the attack in its aftermath. The United Nations condemned the attack in Security Council Resolution 904. In 1995, Yigal Amir assassinated Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin in an attempt to end the peace process. Israel has legalized governmental political murders and the Israeli government has brutally murdered and tortured many innocents. The program Frontline has produced a documentary Israel's Next War, which exposes the failed attempt of Jewish terrorists to set off a massive bomb at a Palestinian girls' school in 2002. The Israeli Air Force bombed the Bahar El Bakar Elementary School on the 8th of April, 1970, mass murdering dozens of children and a teacher. These are only a few of the countless atrocities the Jewish state has committed against innocent people. Perhaps inspired by the accusations against Jews of poisoning wells in the 1300s, some Jews unsuccessfully attempted revenge against the Germans for the Holocaust after the Second World War by poisoning the water supply of Germany. They sought to kill at least six million Germans. Tom Segev wrote in his book, The Seventh Million, The Israelis and the Holocaust. Kovner therefore set six million German citizens as his goal. He thought in apocalyptic terms, Revenge was a holy obligation that would redeem and purify the Jewish people. The group divided into cells, each with a commander. Their primary goal, Plan A, was to poison as many Germans as possible. Plan B was to poison several thousand former SS men in the American Army's POW camps. Reichmann succeeded in infiltrating some members of the group into the Hamburg and Nuremberg water companies. Kovner went to Palestine to bring the poison and, he hoped, to receive the blessing of the Haganah. Such leading figures in Israeli history as Menachem Begin, Yitzhak Shemer, and David Ben-Gurion have been accused of terrorism and or of sponsoring terrorism and or of condoning terrorism. Jacob Bernard August wrote, As the horrors of the Nazi final solution 
were revealed after the war, the pitch of Jewish desperation reached unprecedented heights. The terrorist movements in Palestine against the British mandatory power were totally inconceivable before the war. Even veteran Jewish leaders were unable either to understand or to restrain the fury of the young terrorists, for whom the whole of Jewish experience was summed up in the raising of a gun with the slogan, Rak Kash. Only thus, the struggle of the terrorists, the desperation of the concentration camp graduates, and the military know-how of the European partisans shattered Arab resistance so effectively that nearly their entire population fled in panic. Begin brought his terrorists' mentality with him into Israel's top office. The racist state of Israel is the manifestation of the simplistic, genocidal, and hate-driven mentality, which has existed at least as long as Judaism has existed. Michael Berenbaum wrote in his book, After Tragedy and Triumph, Menachem began built upon this realization and constructed a usable past upon the twin pillars of anti-Semitism and the need for power. Goyim, literally, the nations, hate Jews, begin maintained. In traditional language, Esau hates Jacob. According to Begin's worldview, Jews are a people that dwells alone. Power is essential. Powerlessness invites victimization. Jews must determine their own morality. The world's pronouncements toward the Jews mask, sometimes more successfully and sometimes less so, their genocidal intent. The desire to make the world Judenrein continues, and only fools would allow themselves to be deceived. The New York Times reported on May 5, 1948, on page 17. While Scotland Yard directed an international search for the sender of the explosive parcel that killed Rex Farron, brother of Roy Farron, former Palestine police officer who was blacklisted by Jewish terrorists, official spokesman in the House of Commons, voiced the indignation of the British people today at this wicked outrage. Max Born wrote to the racist nationalist Albert Einstein on 22nd May 1948, I was very sad when the Jews started to use terror themselves and showed that they had learned a lesson from Hitler. Moreover, I detest nationalism of every kind, including that of the Jews. Zionist Jewish bankers have financed America's worst enemies, including Great Britain, the Confederacy, Imperial Japan, Bolshevik Russia, Nazi Germany, etc. Zionist Jewish bankers are responsible for more American war casualties than any other group. Zionist Jewish bankers have deliberately caused America's worst recessions and depressions. They have corrupted the American media and American politics. Michael Collins Piper argues that Mossad agents were involved in the assassination of United States President John Fitzgerald Kennedy and that they wanted him dead because Kennedy opposed the Israeli nuclear weapons program, a program which is not in the best interests of the United States. The Zionists have been a curse to America. Pages 17, 21 to 1722. A quite similar situation exists today, where it would have been in the interests of England and America to have given Russia greatly more financial aid after the fall of the Soviet Union than they did, and to have joined forces with and improved the lot of Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Iraq, Iran, etc. against Israel in order to facilitate international trade through the Middle East and Russia. Instead, due in no small part to the corrupting influences of Zionism on public opinion, the Zionists have made Christianity and Judaism the unnatural common enemy of Islam, and Islam the unnatural enemy of an alliance of Judaism and Christianity, to the detriment of Christendom, Islam, Judaism, and the rest of humanity. The Zionists have successfully blinded Americans and Jews around the world to their own best interests. If the Muslims had played the game by the same rules as the Zionists and sponsored the formation of a political party in America with the agenda of removing Zionists from the Middle East, allying America with the Muslim world to promote trade with India, China, and Russia, and working with Russia to flood it with investment capital while increasing trade with Pakistan, many of the world's problems would be lessened. Instead, the Zionists are leading America into alienation from Russia, China, Pakistan, and the Muslim world, which increases world poverty, worldwide instability, and the likelihood of another, though even more disastrous, world war. Six and one-half billion people face world war, death and absolute destruction for the sake of about five million obscenely selfish Zionists living in Israel 
who stole the Palestinians' land on the racist premise that their religion is a nationalistic religion and that their Jewish God had promised the land to them thousands of years ago. Note that Jews have long suffered from the superstition that they ought not to count their own, and it is sometimes difficult to know how many Jews have lived at any given time in any given place. See, Exodus 30, 12, 2 Samuel 24, 1 Chronicles 21, Hosea 2, 1 Yoma 22, B. Rashi on Exodus 30, 11 to 12. In addition, there are many crypto Jews throughout the world who go uncounted as Jews. For centuries prior to forming a state, Jewish Zionists incited violence in world war. Subsequent to forming the state of Israel, they have endlessly incited violence and desire another world war. If the Arabs had invested their oil monies in advanced education and American media outlets, instead of palaces, limousines, and other unproductive ends, they could have helped to form public opinion in America with the facts and turned it against the inhuman Jewish Zionists who have artificially created a religious war between Christians and Muslims. Jews took Palestine without a Messiah, which in Christianity means that these Jewish Zionists who reject Christ are in league with the Antichrist and must be annihilated. Whereas it would be in the mutual best interests of both Christians and Muslims to join forces to defeat racist Jewish Zionism, racist warmongering Jews have turned Christianity against the Christians and made the Christians the artificial enemies of the Muslims. Instead of presenting the American public with a fair analysis of the facts, the media in America is led by tribal racist Jews who defame all Muslims in the American media as if genetically inferior terrorists who are inherently prone to war and in consort with the devil. Jews had done the same thing to the Catholics and Protestants when they fomented the Kulterkampf. Christopher John Bjorkness has dedicated his life to warning the world about these completely avoidable and artificially manufactured messianic, apocalyptic, and genocidal calamities, and has accurately predicted when and how these events have and will unfold. His many books can be found at his website, cjbbooks.com, together with links to his social media accounts where you will discover more of his unique and informative videos. This reading from the Manufacture and Sale of St. Einstein was made possible by the kind and generous contributions of supporters from around the world. If you would like to help, there are contribution links on the website cjbbooks.com beneath each book title. Heartfelt thanks go out to those who contributed to the making of this video through their generous support.